show. This is Kids in the Tank, a young perspective on business from high school students. Hello and welcome to Kids in the Tank. My name is Ryan Severson and today with me in the tank is Maddie, Kevin, and Kendra. And we are thrilled to introduce our guest for tonight, Jerry Guerin. Jerry, you are officially in the hot seat. I'm not used to being in the hot seat. Tell us a little bit more about your job and the scariest story from your career. Oh, well, uh, well, I'm I'm really kind of like uh, a regional vice president. I uh, I have an office that is the uh, the smallest geographically and but the the largest and most productive in the country. Uh, we investigate uh, crimes of waste, fraud, and abuse fraud, fraud in particular. Uh, when it as it relates to uh, government programs and some of the contracts that we that we enter into as a government with respect to uh, the buildings and the services and the goods that we we purchase for the government um what about like before when you were undercover and everything did you have any scary stories then well i had some uh, there's there's been some scary stuff uh that happened um this is back earlier in my career uh when i was a special agent with the u.s Customs service we were um, we were sitting on an airplane that we knew was going to move a significant quantity of uh, heroin, and I was sitting in a field waiting for the airplane to, to move and for a, for a couple of days. And the airplane finally moved, and we tried to stop the airplane. And uh, the pilot of that airplane came at me uh, with the uh, the prop of the airplane and uh, almost chopped me up. If it wasn't for the fact that I, um, you know, fell to the it smartly jumped to the ground. Uh, and let the airplane pass over me, uh, I would be hamburger today, so. Oh my gosh, well, I'm gonna build on that question. In confrontation situa scenarios, uh, mm -hmm. which was more valuable, your training or your instincts? Well, a, a lot of both. With your training, you can recognize threats. With your instincts, you can either escalate what you're going to do or just de-escalate what you're going to do and make the situation safe. This is Ryan. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Ryan. Um, my question is, in law enforcement, did you seek out all of your jobs or were you offered them? And could you tell us more about the process of transitioning into new jobs? Sure. Um, I've, uh, jobs don't come to you without, well, they do come to you, but um, in, in starting out, you have to seek jobs and you have to go through the interview process and the background process. and the whole process, the, the medical screening, the psychological screening, everything to to enter on duty as a, a as a federal special agent. Um, after that, once you're in the, in the agency, um, you basically go out and, and do your job um, and do your job as best as you can, uh, gain as much experience as you can, and then when it's time to promote, uh, you try to showcase the talents that you have. Uh, and of course, uh, somebody's going to review your resume and your, your achievements and whatnot and make a decision as to whether or not you're going to promote. Um, in moving from agency to agency, um, it's a very similar process to, to starting the, 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 the initial hiring process all over. Um, because you're changing agencies, uh, you, have to, um, you have to go through that background process. You have to go through another medical process. You've got to go through another drug screening. All the stuff that you started when you you did when you're when you first entered entered on duty, you still have to do as a as a senior guy such as myself when when you change. Um, sometimes you get uh, people that are that are looking for your skill set, and they'll reach out to you and try to talk you into coming over to to work for them. Or uh, you know, other times you have to you have to see, seek your own, your own opportunities. It's very similar to uh, what it's like like out there in the real world with respect to business. You know, sometimes people people ask you if they want to if you want to come work for them, and then other times you have to you have to find the job yourself. Thank you. Sure. Hi, Jerry. This is Maddie. Hi, Maddie. What advice would you give to a kid looking to go into law enforcement? Well, um, the first well, first of all, I would I would tell them that they needed to get a college education. Uh, Particularly if they want to go into if they want to go into federal law enforcement, uh, we are a, a, a highly educated workforce, and quite frankly, you know, an advanced degree doesn't doesn't hurt uh, hurt at all. Um, I I'd say uh, make sure that you uh, stay away from 
uh, you know, stay away from trouble, um, <laughs> do the right thing, get good <laughs> grades. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I would suggest that they take an internship because we, uh, you know, federal agencies do offer internships to, to kids in college and uh, working on their master's degree because that's 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 really a, a good foot to get in the door where where you become a known commodity and uh, you'll be noticed before before others. Okay, thank you. So sure. to follow that, what classes like specifically or internships do you think would be most beneficial? Well, uh, classes. You know, um, in federal law enforcement, you know, crime is so diverse that you know, a, uh, uh, you know, a degree in criminal justice um, might be as good as an accounting degree or a business degree or an engineering degree or, or even, uh, you know, to take it even a step further, um, you know, a, a medical degree for crying out loud. I mean, every, every one of those things that I just mentioned, plus a, a, a ton more, have some relevancy to law enforcement because crime is so diverse so i would you know my 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 best advice would be you know pursue what you want to pursue with an eye toward going into law enforcement um you know get that accounting degree because that that that, that that's really something something that would be valuable get that engineering degree because that would be you know incredibly uh, valuable to, like, say, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Um, get that chemistry degree because it might be might be useful to DEA. Um, do those things, and then you know, just keep your nose straight and get that get that internship with one of the agencies that's relevant to your degree. If you have an accounting degree, you know, you could go to work for one of the inspectors inspectors general like me, and and you know, a, a intern. And if you do a good job, you might get hired as an agent or, you know, do an internship with the FBI and, and you might get hired hired there. If you've got a language specialty, especially um, DEA, you know, if you've got a chemistry degree, take a take an internship with DEA, you know, build on those experience, get that build that resume, build that resume and, 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 and get noticed and you'll get hired. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. All right. Hey, my name's Kevin. Um, Hi, Kevin. So we noticed that you worked a volunteer youth sports director. Uh huh. Yeah. So, what are some things that you do to balance your work, your personal life, and your volunteers? Well, you know, interestingly enough, um, you know, early on in my career, I was, you know, I was a twenty-four-seven, three hundred sixty-five day uh, a year guy. Um, wow. <laughs> you know, hard. especially especially when I was, you know, uh, working for the custom service and uh for homeland security investigations so for um, that were you like on call or how did well, that in, work well in particular in 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 my role as a deputy chief of staff at hsi um i was on on 24 hour 360 i mean i was on call all the time we you know you you think of the federal agencies as only working in the united states well that's not necessarily the truth uh, with respect to HSI, I think we're, we're, we were uh, at that time we had we had offices in in, in I think 83 countries, 83 different countries. Wow. So, so things are going on around the world all the time, and you know there were there were some some uh, some really s sometimes scary things that were going on, and somebody had to be awake and pay attention to what was what was happening on the other side of the world. How so, did that affect your personal life? Like, I know as a high school student, like, I struggle with, like, homework and school and, like, a job and sports. How did working that much affect your family life? Well, you you really try to learn to, to bring... I mean, you know, unfortunately, some of it has to come home with you because you can't be at the office 24 hours a day. Um, back in those days, my typical day began at about 7.30 in the morning and, and went till 7.30 at night. And really, um, there was kind of a watershed moment when uh, I had my my son, uh, who's now 15. I think he was like three or four years old. I came home at 9:30 or 10 o'clock, and he was, and he was waiting up for me to put him to bed, which was ridiculous. And I realized that I really sort of needed to make a change, uh, you know, in 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 my life. And uh, that's a major reason for me to have uh, left HSI 
um, and gone out into the to the IG community because you know we we work white collar crime and we work uh, white collar hours. It doesn't mean we don't work overtime and that doesn't mean we work we don't work weekends. But by and large, uh, I'm at home. I have a much more balanced um, lifestyle. Um, yeah, I've got to answer the phone or, or deal with it with with uh, email sometimes. Um, but by and large, I I'm I'm able to do things like coach basketball and and be involved in youth sports and 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 give back to the community and and be home for dinner, and that's important to me. All right. Thank you. Sure. All right, I'm going to move on to a more sensitive subject. Sure. Uh, what were you doing, and what was your position on 9-11? All right, on 9-11, I was, um, I was the National Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force Coordinator. Um, I was working in the U.S. Customs Smuggling Division. Um, one of my colleagues came came into uh, my area and said, hey, a plane hit uh, 9-11, or a plane hit uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the tower. And I said, my first reaction was, um, uh, is the weather bad in New York? Because it was a beautiful day down here in Washington, D.C. And, um, and I said, wait a minute, they don't fly anywhere near you know, the, 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 the towers. And he said, yeah, I'm going to go put it on in the conference room. And I said, okay, I'll be in there in a little bit. So TV was on. There were a couple of the, my, my, uh, my colleagues in there watching uh, the, the TV. And uh, I walked in, and I happened to catch the, the second airplane uh, going to the tower. And I said, uh, you know, we're at war. And from there, um, there were, it was chaos here because, of course, we had, you know, the, the Pentagon, which uh, uh, was hit, too. Um, but, uh, at that moment, um, you know, I was, I was, uh, asked to set up the, uh, situation room, um, for, um, to screen leads that would be called into, uh, customs, you know, that, that would be in furtherance of the, uh, of the, uh, the overall terrorism investigation. And myself and another agent were kind of spearheaded that er effort and for, uh, about a week we, we lived and breathed, uh, reading reading the leads that came into the, uh, uh, the situation. Room. So, um, it was a tough time, tough time for everybody. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. All right. So I have another question. Sure. So because you're in law enforcement, does that way, does that change the way you interact in social media, like your Twitter, maybe Instagram or anything that you use? Is there someone that regulates you? Someone that has to, it has to go through before you can post anything no uh i am free to post whatever whatever i like uh just like just like you guys um the one thing that i do do is i'm i'm a little more careful as to who i uh i invite into my my circle of of facebook friends um you know i have to i have to know you uh before i'll uh, uh you know i'll let you see that you know everything on my feed so um, you'll accept us, right? Right. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, when I send you like a when I send you like a I, farm I, bill request, you'll like you know accept it. I'll, I'll think about it, but yeah, okay. you know. Well, my I farm needs help, so. <laughs> no, but you know, I I am I am careful about what I say, uh, you know, because um, you know I technically I, I I work for the the, the president of the United States. Um, so, um, you know, either, you know, we've, we've, we've just have to be not careful, but I, I'm, I'm respectful of, of people's opinions and, um, I try not to start fights. I try not to, to get involved in things and I try to keep things about me as opposed to things that are going on in the country. Is that? So you share a lot of cat videos. <laughs> a lot of cat videos and puppy videos. Oh, <laughs> oh. <the> puppies! <laughs> Everybody goes, "Oh, when you do a puppy." Video. <laughs> so, being in law enforcement, how has that shaped your view on the Black Lives Matter movement versus law enforcement, if at all? Ooh, that's a. a here's a, here's the thing is is that you know, um, I certainly understand. 
um, the, the, the long history of... I'm sorry, you're cutting out. Am I? Yeah. Uh, let me... All right. Okay. Is this a little better? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, but from my personal perspective, I think that, you know, all life matters. Um, you know, from, from, from birth to death. Um, I'm, 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 I am, uh, you know, with politics notwithstanding, I'm anti-abortion and I'm anti-death penalty. I believe that all life matters. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Uh, thank you, Jerry, for answering the questions we had for you. And now we're going to be moving on to the next segment where you ask us the questions. <laughs> <laughs> he was excited for this one. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it was interesting because, you know, in, in preparation for this, I, I, I asked one of the producers to give me a little bit of background about what you guys wanted to grow up and do. And, you know, Maddie, you want to go into intern, intern, interior design. Ryan, you want to go into marketing. Kevin, you want to be a surgeon. And Kendra, equine science. And I was like, how am I going to twist this? <laughs> so I, I'm going to kind of take a little bit of a, 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 a more – uh, thoughtful approach to this and I want to ask you guys if you're if you're really passionate about what you want to do all right who wants to start off I can <laughs> um, Maddie oh Maddie, yeah. I guess. All right. <laughs> now you're in the hot seat <laughs> yeah I guess I am exactly like I said I'm not uh, I'm not used to being in the hot seat I'm, I'm already like, like starting to I'm sweat I'm like getting interrogated <laughs> by a cop <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to say that yes, I am, because what I want to do is kind of branching off of things that I love to do, because I'm really interested in photography and graphic design and visual arts in general, and uh -huh. I'm also interested in environmental sciences, so I think that if I could combine those two and form like comfortable and healthy living spaces while working with my creativity, I think that'd be something I'd really love to do, and it wouldn't feel like a job, which is kind of my goal. Okay. Good. Evan, how about you? You want to be a surgeon? Yeah. Um, so the story behind that is I just see surgeons as such powerful people. They're, they're respected. They can pull people back from the brinks of death, and I see that as so interesting, and it's something that I really want to do. It's I find it almost inspiring just to watch them. Uh huh. It's, it's, it's the amount of respect I have for them and their careers. It's, it's amazing what they can do, how they do it, and everything is just advancing so fast. The medicine industry will advance more now than in any other time. And you know, I, you know, I, I follow that on just a little bit and make a comment. I have a good friend okay. of mine who's a neonatologist, and. He has commented to me that when his kids were in high school, they were learning biological concepts that he was taught in med school. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that for a second. Yeah, my and, mom and said something about that. Like, she said that in high school she learned about DNA, and then when I'm in high school, I'm, like, replicating and making and altering DNA. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Mom, I made this warm oh, glow, and oh, I made it genome. We're going to have some, some huge disease that's going to kill us. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Modifying the DNA <laughs> in high school. Hopefully I'll get an A on that lab. <laughs> uh, I got a question for, for Ryan and Kendra now. Okay. How, oh, boy. How do, you guys, how do you guys define success? Not failing. <laughs> um, I think success is where you're happy with yourself, you're happy with uh, what you've done in life, and really about you, not like what society defines as, as success, which would be right. like having a lot of money or having a nice house. It's where you're being happy, like you're happy with what you've done, and you feel like you've been like successful or like you've accomplished what you wanted to in your life um i feel like a lot of people come in with like a lot of huge hopes and dreams like we all grew up being like i wanted to be a princess like that was it like i was living breathing princess i dressed I wanted up to be a princess too, yeah, I, me too. My oh, yeah. I mean my mom took me to disney world and i had like eight outfit changes every day so like i was living breathing it and then all of a sudden one day i like hit it and i was like only eligible bachelor is Harry, and let's be real, he's a little old. Yeah. And so I think 
a lot of people just have these huge dreams and they get so blindsided and yeah. they you just need to look back and every day and just be like wow from a year ago how much I progressed or even just a week and I think that's just success in itself realizing that you're growing as a person and even if you don't achieve the goal you thought you'd achieve you still have to realize that you're growing as a person and you're really succeeding in what you want even if it's taking longer than you expect I think that's an awesome answer you know for me you know I define success as, as, as being happy mm-hmm. because I am happy and I, I, I also define sex success as, as 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 just doing a good job period and, you know if you if, if you can just simply do a good job I think that you know you'll build upon it and, and, and you'll be naturally successful you know and if you're pleased with what you're doing it, it, it'll it'll show so now I've got a question for everybody now Right. Where do you see yourself five years after you finish school? Hopefully not in your, like, in another hot seat with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, let's, let's do a reunion five years after you guys are out okay, of school. How's yeah. that? Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> Hopefully with no, no handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no trouble. No, seriously, seriously, because, you know, if you're going to be successful, you have to have at least an idea where you want to be five years from now. So... Tell me about that. Okay, well, um, I'm hoping to have graduated from college by then. Uh, okay. And then I'm very ambitious, so I would like to be a working student for an Olympic athlete and then hopefully oh, cool. strive for that. Cool, so, very cool. Yeah. yeah. How about everybody else? Um, for me, I'd probably, since I want to do marketing, um, maybe like have my foot in the door, you know, um, have had a job for a few years and like where I'm comfortable um, in that position and hopefully like have gotten like a promotion or two uh, maybe be in charge of like a few like divisions or something like that um, and maybe move on to start my own business uh-huh. something like that yeah. okay. uh, for me it's after graduated college so hopefully I'll be in med school by then <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. Well, five years after you're out of school, that means out of out of med school. What are you going to be doing? Out of med school? That would be eight oh, years. Yeah. Right? yeah, that would be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I worded it that way. For oh, okay. Oh, All right. oh, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm blonde. You can't see through the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hopefully five years after after I finish med school, I'll have my career by then, or at least started it. <laughs> have cool. a family. Have something to work up to. He'll be doing surgery on me because I'll probably get hurt. Probably. (laughs) (laughs) Making connections, you know. (laughs) You can fix the bend in my nose. (laughs) Uh, For me, it's probably similar to everyone else. Just in a position I'm comfortable with, but with something I can still work towards and look for new ways to move up or new things to learn in my job and career. And also, yeah, family and just settled in and comfortable but still pushing myself and moving out of my comfort zone good good well that's all i have have all the questions i have for you guys um i guess is this the are we getting to the end here yeah uh thank you for joining us on our podcast and we really appreciate you sharing your insight on your career in law enforcement we really appreciate it Thank you, I, so I, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really, I really enjoyed talking with you guys, and and, and maybe sometime <laughs> when when I'm out that way, I'll stop by uh, Geneva Supply and yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. Come on a Wednesday. <laughs> Come, on a <laughs> Come on a Wednesday. Come on a Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll leave you with this. Okay. To to be successful, you're gonna have to fail, and success isn't being in the right place at the right time. It's making the right decision at the right time. Oh, I thought it was going to be, don't do drugs. (laughs) (laughs) Well, don't do that either. (laughs) All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you you. so much. All right, best of luck to everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Hey, I just want to say thank you again to Jerry Guerin for joining us on our podcast, Kids in the Tank. <laughs> um, and right now we're going to have a word from our sponsors because, you know, we can't afford this. No, we can't. Help us, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Lemon states, lemonade stands won't do a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we fundraised enough for sports. <laughs> Don't make me sell cookie dough again. <laughs> 
Prestige Paints is changing the way you buy paint. We're the number one selling brand of interior and exterior paint on Amazon.com. And with the help of our app, Prestige Color Pick, we're making paint buying a whole lot easier. With the app, you can take a picture of your wall and then virtually paint it with any of our 2,400 plus colors. And now you can try our competitors' colors on your walls too. Once you find the color you love, you can purchase it from Amazon right through the app, saving yourself a trip to the store. Prestige Color Pick is free and available through the App Store and Google Play. Live colorfully and design your life with Prestige. Hi, this is Mike Butler with Elkhorn Chemical and Packaging. We've been in business for 65 years. We're located in Wisconsin. We represent the janitorial, packaging, safety, and maintenance categories. We sell to small businesses all the way to large corporations. So, if you're in need of a cleanup in aisle 9, give us a call at 800-377-3556 or check us out at elkhornchemical.com. Welcome back to Kids in the Tank. We are now entering our third and final segment, The Round Table, where we will be talking about today's hot topics and trends. First, we're going to talk about Home Run Derby. This is an annual uh, event that they do in the major leagues where they try to get the most home runs, and they count it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't really watch baseball, so it's not really a big yeah, deal to I didn't me. Watch it either. If there's but... a cute boy, I pretend I watch baseball. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm like, boom, yeah, that's where we I got all life. the stats down. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking okay. of uh, home runs, Black China's been scoring some, and <laughs> yeah. let's you be real, uh, Rob <laughs> Kardashian's been scoring some in the petty category. Yes. <laughs> all right. I mean, but not that Black China didn't deserve all the stuff that she got. Okay, I mean, so... For those that don't know, Black China and Rob Kardashian were dating or married or I don't even know. It's the Kardashians. The marriage <laughs> lasts like what five seconds? Like they yes. get through the whole like ceremony and they're like, "Oh, guys, done. we're divorced now. We're done." Now. <laughs> Someone yeah. else. As soon as they sign the papers, they go like right into the next room and sign the divorce <laughs> papers. They spend a lot of money on lawyers. Good thing their uh, dad was a lawyer. <laughs> so Rob Kardashian posted all of Black China's nudes on his Instagram, and then he got kicked off the Instagram, right? I don't know. And then he went to Twitter. So? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't really know why Black China's surprised. It's not like she's a stripper. Everyone's seen it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this time like, it was just free. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. why she's mad. That's why she's That's mad. That's why. Yeah. And then, like, Black China, like, she sent pictures of, with another man in Rob Kardashian's bed to Rob Kardashian, which is just like, low. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wage gap. I feel like we need to talk about that. Enough about Black China. She's making enough money. <laughs> making enough money. She's not part of the wage gap. <laughs> I don't guess. Does anyone here believe in it? I believe in it. I personally don't. Like, um, just because, like, I read some stuff, and, like, it makes sense. Like, I read that uh, men spend, like, are a lot more likely. It's, like, it's like in the 90%, like, 90% more likely to be injured during like their job and like they also work more hours and they chose like the highest paying like the five highest paying jobs and so it's so. not fair one time i broke a nail while working okay okay <laughs> all right okay yeah then, you're in okay, like the 10 percent yeah. you're in the 10 percent like, have you ever heard about the girls soccer team so no. like the girls soccer team is way better than the guys soccer team that's not because i'm a girl and saying that it's like actually true we actually like win stuff <laughs> even though no one in america watches soccer <laughs> And they calculated, like, they don't make any money. Like, they they make less than the guys when they lose. So when they win a game, the guys still make more and they lose a game. But, I mean, you have to think about, like, viewership. Yeah. A lot more people But the girls get more. They bring soccer. in more. Really? Yeah. Oh, they bring that's, in that's something more. I would expect. Yeah, yeah that's, that's Like, everyone knows because Hope Solo. Everyone knows, like, all those, like, another other people like that. You never heard of Hope Solo? No. no. Yeah. Really? When you said that, right, and I just had right. the same like, look in her eyes. No. Well, you guys should look it up. There's a really cool video that Hope Solo does about the wage gap, and I believe in it because of Hope. Mm. All um, right. Another. Amazon Prime Day? You I mean 7 Eleven Day where you get free, <laughs> free slushies from 7 Eleven? That's yeah, the only holiday I celebrate. That was overlooked. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't get those on Amazon Prime. Not yet. No, you can't. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. 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 I bet well, they'll come out with it. Amazon maybe you can bought bring it up uh, to Geneva Supply Whole Foods. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Amazon bought Whole Foods, so hopefully next year during Amazon Prime Day, I can order me some mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah, but, but like with free right now shipping. their food is expensive. Like it's I tried really to expensive. order some fruit snacks or something because my mom won't buy me them, but like <laughs> That's, so I'll hit you up. 
Thank I'll you. take care of Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I have my license now, so I can just pick them up. But like, yeah, but like you know when you're before. in your sweatpants and you got that messy bun, you know what I'm talking about, Maddie. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you got like the bags <laughs> under your eyes, and you haven't seen sunlight in like God knows when. And you like emerge from the cage, and you're like, I need pizza or fruit <laughs> snacks, and you don't want to go out in public because you only have one left shoe on, and you don't know why. Like that's what you want to order. Where's online. your right shoe? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> what I don't have, have a problem with lately? that. <laughs> Because I've, I mean, I've never experienced I'll go that. out whatever, like, however I look. I don't really care. <laughs> like, I've well, probably never seen that. We know that, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> so North Korea nuking. That's been a big deal in the news. Well, no, North Korea's been threatening it for a while. Yeah. And we've like, been we've known about it, although yeah. now they're starting to claim they've done more tests. Yeah. Do you I mean, feel that it's again. a threat? I definitely think it's a threat, like, just because it kind of reminds me of, like, a mad child. Like, you have to give it attention, or it's just going to throw a fit and, like... Break something. Things yeah. get worse. Yeah. Definitely. I don't know. It's like, not something to overlook, but it's also something that... It's okay like, to mock every once in a while. <laughs> I mean, there's, like, jokes. It's, like, World War One, how people prepared, World War Two, like, how people prepared, and then World War Three is, like, people memes. made memes. <laughs> oh, people made memes, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, millennials. That really, about right. <laughs> um, it up. I don't know. I don't really believe it. They've, like, been threatening this for how many years, and they haven't really done anything. But then again... Uh, I don't want to say that because, like, they're going to find this. It's going to be awkward. Oh, okay. And then they're going to be, like, knocking on my door. They'll be like, hey, you. <laughs> no, they're just going to nuke your house. Yeah, they're just, <laughs> just going to nuke your house. And then my mom's going to come <laughs> home and be like, Kendra. <laughs> I'm Kendra. Wait, gonna that's not my name. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to stand outside with a grenade launcher and just go, like, <laughs> All right, <laughs> so we got, door. like, the nuke threat. But let's talk about something else really serious. Distracted driving. I think that, like, a lot of people our generation, we have this issue. We all like to Snapchat and drive, text and drive, change the music, because we all want that dope mixtape. So. <laughs> Honestly, like, I've done it before, like, and... <gasps> I am. I am. <laughs> Come on. I, oh, I like, no. <laughs> um, it didn't really click how bad it would be until we watched, like, that video in school, mm-hmm. and, like, just how she had to restart her life, and, um, like, after she got in an accident for being on her phone... And it just kind of, like, clicked, like, how much I would lose, and is it really worth it for a Snapchat? Yeah, I recently had a girl in my high school that I knew that she was uh, texting and driving, went through a stop sign, and actually uh, killed a 65-year-old man. And I have always been very adamant about not looking at my phone, because mainly I have no social life and no one texts me, so I don't really have to worry (laughs) about it. But, like, I understand when people have friends, I don't know what those are, but, like, oh, I think geez. that nothing is, like, more like important. Yeah, now like, when we give you that Twitter follow. Yeah, yeah maybe we should follow her. So she's a maybe uh, we'll, like, shout out chain reaction. Yeah. <laughs> now you have friends. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we've got enough. Let's get brighten up the <laughs> talk a little yeah. bit. Country Thunder. Ew. Uh, I don't like country. Yeah. I don't like okay. country. It's okay. like summer fest, but all, right. all country music. You mean Which, Hicks. Uh, <laughs> nah. um, I used to live in Illinois, and I used to live near Country Thunder, and it used to be like a huge issue, so I lived in a subdivision, and I was little, I made a bunch of families around, and it was basically like, when you got home at six for dinner, you did not leave the house afterwards, because there'd be so many drunk drivers, and Oof. it was just like really scary, and then we could also hear the music, which was really loud, and I was like, you know, little at the time, so I was like, oh my gosh, we can hear them, and they're like really, really far away. And you see everyone pull up with their pickup trucks and cowboy hats, and you'd be like, it's coming again. It's coming again. Like, it's winter has come. <laughs> <laughs> the the that's like the groundhog. Like that's like the sign for country yeah. thunder. <laughs> Here, I'll go back in your hole. I'm not getting hit today. Just barricade. <laughs> Actually, it was really bad for Summerfest. Like w- driving home, there was like a ton of scary drivers who just like zoomed past oh, us. Yeah. Like I was like, it was really scary. Like that's why I don't leave my house. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I stay with my Netflix. There you go. I can you experience know. the world that way. Yeah. So Donald Trump. Uh, junior, or not Donald Trump, yeah, Donald Trump Jr., he was meeting with a Russian person. Lawyer. Lawyer. Yeah, yeah that was And, like, he had, uh, uh, like, compromising information on Hillary Clinton during I do, the... too. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. Yeah, what else? What else is there? And, like, during the election, and um, lots of people think that, like, Russia, that means, like, Russia had a play in, like, helping Trump get elected, which is kind of, like, that's actually really messed up. Like that so, kinda but like it's scares interesting them. to think about. Yeah, like also like looking almost, back. Yeah, it's also almost not surprising. I mean, yeah. people have speculated that for so long already. I mean, yeah. there's so many things like I you feel don't like this realize are happening. Been like the craziest election. No, ever. it has. <laughs> and the worst yeah. thing is like I don't know about you guys, but I'm 17, so I can't vote. So I'm just sitting there like. 
Oh. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah, we can just watch for now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah like, but like we really can't say anything, and no. I think that's like the worst because you're like hearing different views, and then like you know, what if your parents have a different view, but you have no voice, and I think it's really infuriating. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean there's at least something you can do at home, and that's DIY videos. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's all I do. <laughs> I literally, like, I love watching about them. Not being able to vote. When I wake up in the morning and I realize that I'm going to be late for school, I go on my phone and I go on Facebook and find some DIY videos. Oh, and they make me feel better about myself. If I feel like wasting a few hours of my life, and I go I'm, on DIY videos. I watch a few DIY videos. <laughs> and while I'm, like, learning how to make a birdhouse out of a milk jug, I am also calculating how late I'll be to school. But then when I show up to math late, I'll be like, yeah, but, like, Birdhouse. I learned about I learned I something. Yeah, birdhouse. Birdhouse. <laughs> no, Pinterest is the place to go for DIY videos. Oh my gosh. That's or the new true. Snapchat update where you can just watch DIY things on no, the stories they have. Oh yeah, my, when it's I go to the bathroom, it's gotten so much longer. Oh my god, same. <laughs> like, I think it's my parents are like about sending you to I've always I've been always on my phone, like since always. I was little. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. speaking of Snapchat, they have coffee all over Snapchat videos, recipes. True. All people talk about is coffee. And like I on stories coffee. of the stories, Starbucks. Stories, all you see is Starbucks coffee. <laughs> okay, I think I'm the like only white girl that's ever gonna say this. I hate coffee. I What's like coffee. I think I like Starbucks coffee. is overrated though. I like really sweet coffee. Like Me too. I can't have like unsweet coffee. No. You like, like milk flavored coffee? Like I like, <laughs> like coffee flavored milk. I like it so it. sweet it tastes like warm ice cream. Like oh, that's how sweet I like so it. So you just want warm like the ice cream? Yeah, so remind me to bring that next time you ask for coffee. Oh my gosh, right. I'm like I, really high that. energy, <laughs> high strung, I don't know guys noticed, but like <laughs> so coffee, you know, coffee. all of a sudden I'm like, <laughs> too much. And then I'm like, everything slows so down around like, me, but like I'm pretty sure I'm just going like double speed, no. but like I'm pretty sure like, well, why is Maddie moving in slow motion? <laughs> that reminds me of like, see uh, sound. over the head. <laughs> yeah, basically. Or, like, what's yeah, it's oh like, like that. Yeah, a squirrel. yeah, yeah like, like yes. I'm running around my cookie and then all of a sudden everyone else is moving in slow motion. It's like, why? why? And then all of a sudden I'm like, I have a headache. <laughs> I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so, Instagram models, fun fact about me, I am one. Um, if you'd like, come follow me at Kendra Heath underscore 34. Oh, really? Oh. Get about uh, 30 likes per picture. So, I'm wow. kind of a big deal. Okay. Oh, wow. Do you already have like Do you Nike have zero sponsoring followers on that account too? Oh. Well, I am looking for ambassadors. Uh, <laughs> okay, if you guys Maddie. would like to sponsor me, Kids in the Tank, I am uh, very open. Okay. We'll we know. That. We know. <laughs> you don't have any money anyway. Yeah. You can't afford to sponsor we, people. The lemonade stand. Yeah, what are you guys sponsors out there that's going to like sponsor us? Model, sponsor me stand. to sponsor them. <laughs> Which ever, would you guys like ever consider that as a career? Like, if you could. Like, what do you mean? Oh, they make, they make so much money. Like, you know, <laughs> like, like, I can like, and a I am. Followers. Oh, yeah, she's already doing it. Like, the people yeah. who have, like, a million followers. Like, I mean, you mean me? If you think you can do that. All right, 30 likes. Zero followers. Likes. <laughs> yeah, she has, followers. She'll have Twitter. Right. <laughs> three more after tonight. Oh, yeah. Okay. 33 likes. Maybe. <laughs> kind of a big deal in the social media world. <laughs> yes. Hop on me now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ISIS leader and uh, is dead. Oh. This is why I don't drink coffee. <laughs> so it's okay. so hard. I believe Russia killed him. That's yes. That's. I mean, I mean not like the country, but like. But like someone. Yeah. Come on, Putin. Like it just seems like they always just find a new one, and like no matter like if we seem to like make a. Uh, so when I'm like looking for a job, I should be careful. <laughs> Needs leadership. Okay. Leadership. Yeah, oh. leadership role wanted. <laughs> Can I get her kicked no, out? <laughs> Mom, I'm going to go study abroad. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. No. All jokes aside, ISIS is a really big problem. Yeah. I think none like... of us really know how to handle it. I mean, I... we were all so little when 9-11 happened, but this is kind of like our 9-11. It's yeah. yes. And it's like, something that I honestly think think would carry on for so long, but it just has, and it just seems like it keeps on growing. Well, it's and so it's hard to like, take care of. It is. And it's like you take one step forward, and then you're back at the same spot. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. like, it just... You have to be so careful with everything you do. Yeah, yeah Especially online, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking, speaking of, of online... <laughs> James! Dang. High five, good high five. Oh, all right. Way to <laughs> steal my <laughs> intro. <There you> go. <laughs> <laughs> we practiced that. <laughs> um, speaking of online, so net neutrality... That's kind of like a big deal now. Like it's like Twitter. It's like really trending right now, and um, it's where actually Kevin, can you explain it? Yeah, probably a bit better. So for those who don't know what net neutrality is, it's 
net neutrality keeps everything almost fair on the internet, as fair as it can be. So what some internet providers are trying to do and some what the government is also trying to prevent is is trying to prevent internet providers from monopolizing the internet by like let's say there was an example like ATM was like partnered with Ford or Chevy or vice versa. So if they wanted to keep Ford in, in business by keeping them online, they would slow down Chevy's internet like they would slow down their process, processing speed for their website. So they wouldn't be able to have any any people to go on the website without paying extra. And so what net neutrality does is it prevents that. It doesn't allow people to slow down certain websites to almost make them unusable. So what that does is like it keeps everything fair and it keeps everything even in the internet. So I definitely think that's something like we should fight for because that's really important. Oh, yes. It definitely is because it I was still use internet explorer yeah. so everything's still oh, okay. loading. Oh yeah, you're still back. <laughs> they got the dial up. It's just struggle bill over here. You, you just got notified that Trump was elected. <laughs> just, yeah. Wait, he is? <laughs> <laughs> and like especially like I do like fun stuff like I just like building cars. You know like how you can like build the cars on like different websites. Like I do that all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Mayweather versus McGregor. Uh, Mayweather is a boxer, and McGregor, I really hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, is a wrestler. wrestler. Oh, wrestler. wrestler. Yeah. So they're fighting, and Mayweather is undefeated, and McGregor has been defeated, but still really a big deal. Still yeah. the best of what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're going head-to-head in two different types of fighting categories. Kind of like Rob Kardashian in Black seemed... China. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. They're probably making the same, same amount of money, though. That's true. Yeah, like that billion-dollar yeah. win. Like That's crazy. Oh my, yes. That is so much money. Like, oh, like Yeah, but I wonder how much it's like getting deducted. That's true. Because like you got to pay for like the arena, are watching. Like everything. Yeah. I feel like this is definitely staged. It's like yeah, I feel like it's all it's, fake. It's just like why it's like two different sports like tennis and baseball. They're playing against yeah. each other. Like, <laughs> like well, they both okay, have a okay, ball, but that's the only. <laughs> wow, really? That's what okay, we go. Yeah. With. Okay, it's a better comparison than Rob Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> it's called trying. <laughs> okay, she okay. tried. <laughs> but not on Twitter because you have zero followers. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you make me maybe. feel really bad about myself, which is why I yeah, think just talk about the American dream. Mine would be having Twitter followers. <laughs> More than dream. zero. <laughs> That's your goal. Right. Hopefully not negative one. Follows yourself. Yeah. But All can right, you so. do that? I think so. <laughs> All right, so the American dream is basically, well, it's like up for interpretation, which I believe is um, where you start poor and you build yourself up and you kind of make something of yourself, but it's all through, like, hard work, and it's not just, like, I was born rich and I died rich. It's more like I was born poor and I worked really, 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 really hard to get where I'm at. I feel like the American dream is kind of, like, different for immigrants who come to the country and, like, people who kind of lived in it. Mm -hmm. I feel like they have different um, expectations for America and, like, what they want to, like, accomplish. Um, That's just, like... Because I don't think it'd be the same for me or, like, someone who just got here and is, like, already, like, 23 or something. Yeah. So, personally, for me, since my parents did immigrate to this country, the American dream to them, they essentially figured it out once they got here. They didn't really know what the American dream was, but they knew that they wanted something here. Because in the time that they came here, America was in a time of prosperity. It's like, you came here to have a job. You came here to work hard. You came here to make money and have a future. And when they came here... Their dream was just to have a family, to have a sustainable income, have kids, be happy, and just stay together. And I feel like it stayed generally the same throughout the times because I've heard things like the American dream being dead or it's dying or it's like it's it's not dead and it's not dying. It's just evolving. Yeah, it's changing. Yeah. It's it's different for us because well, it's different for me especially because my my parents came here having the idea that. They, they wanted to have a completely different life, and I do too. I, I want to have a completely different life from what I have now. I'm not saying I'm not grateful for what I have now, but I definitely want to improve more upon that because the last thing you want to do is stay satisfied with what you have and just keep moving forward. And that's what I think the American dream almost is just essentially. It's just your strive for progression, strive for being something more than what you have. That's a really good way to yeah. put well, it. I agree with that. You nailed that. I'm I pretty sure. Like also, like, also, <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. I think going off what Kevin said, like, there's that people look at it that way but then there's also like the way people look at millennials and how we think they think we're an entitled 
oh, generation. Oh, I hated that they think that. And just that, like, our American dream is, just hand this to me, or, like, I don't want to yeah. work for it. Yes. And so there's people who view it differently when they look at us and our generation. Yeah, yeah. and they, like, judge us unfairly, and then they claim yeah. we do that to them, but it's really more of them doing that to us. It's just yeah. old times being stuck where they are, and it's not saying, like, it's not... It's not bad to be, like, a traditionalist, but, like, you're not going to be a, re- a, re- a revolutionary without, like, moving on. Like, That's a very good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you guys all... Who believes that the American dream is dead? Anyone? I don't no. think I so. I've never dead. thought that first. I do think, think it's just evolving, like just, Kevin says. Yeah. It's yeah, just changing in what we believe in. I do believe that right. you really have to work at it, though. Like, it's definitely, you know, hard. We think it's a lot hard easier, work, but... Yes. All right, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's listening to Kids in the Tank and to make sure to tune in next week for Max, Tim, and Felicity Wren, who are directors at the International Screenwriters Association. So, a oh, one, a two, a three, a Zooey Mama. <laughs> cringe, cringe, cringe. Yep. Why do you do that? <laughs> To learn more about BizTank and this podcast, check out our website at genevasupply.com backslash BizTank or head over to our Facebook pages. Your hosts, Ryan, Kendra, Natty, and Kevin. Executive producers, Will Burdett and Danny Butler. Content producer, Melissa DeBach. Executive producer, David Paulzine. Co-creator and director, Jeff Peterson. Co-creator, Mark Becker.